Well, that's interesting. Two times in a row, they, they turned off my camera. Luckily, I was looking, remember? Well, I didn't post it, so. Damn it. They're, they're starting to mess with me. I don't like it. They turned off my camera twice. Thank God I was pointing it like I am now outward so I could see that it went off. Because there's nothing worse than getting through 15 minutes of a message and then turning the phone around and seeing that the damn thing cut off after two minutes. So I don't know what, if they're, if they're turning it off, if there's something wrong with my phone. It's not hot. I don't know. I, I wanted to get this message out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. They keep turning my damn phone off, these pricks. I don't get it. Why should the phone just turn off by itself? It doesn't make any sense. So anyhow, um, J.D. Niger, word of truth. All praises, honor, and glory to the most high heavenly father, his only begotten son, Jediah. Jedediah, sorry. It's locked here. Jedediah, Josiah, Solomon, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. Same spirit. Comes in the volume of the book. He's the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. And he brought forth the Holy Spirit through coming as a man, God-man, to walk this earth to prove to us that the Heavenly Father exists and he is going to come back with heavenly angels to reconcile us back to him. So I'm going to try this one more time. If it cuts off, then I'm probably going to just wait till tomorrow. I don't know what's going on with the phone. <laughs> it really takes a lot of energy out of me when that shit happens. It's like they know it. They know it bugs the hell out of me. And it just drags the whole Holy Spirit down. But I guess we got to get used to that. It's probably going to get worse, not better. So, ah. Uh, There we have it. The phone is sitting still. Nothing going on. Um, man, it's hot. All right. So we were talking about the birth of Solomon. And, you know, the, the thrust of this message is going to be that the mercies of David... The mercies of David as David conquered and under under the house of David, under the Israelites um, and under Jesus or Jedediah or Josiah or Joshua or Yahshua, this, this priest, our high priest, Melchizedek, we're going to rule with honor and justice and righteousness. And there's not going to be any more of this bullshit, lying, deceptive system that we're under. So um, I'm just going to read through this real quick and you'll get an idea. And then we'll go into another part that explains the same thing. So when Solomon was born, this is what happened to David. Um, verse 21, Solomon's birth. And David comforted Bathsheba and went into her and laid with her. And she bare a son and called his name Solomon. The, and the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet and he called his name Jedidiah because of the Lord. Jedidiah means beloved of the Lord. And Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon and took the royal city. So these Ammonites um, had... An anointing of some kind they were a royal city under Ammon and we know that Ammon and Moab came out of Lot so it was of it was of our family but it was it wasn't uh, I'm not sure how how Lot and Ammon we know that those children were born of a incestuous relationship so there's something weird going on with that because 
that's not the first time that happened. And that that's what we see how some of these um, these Edomites out here have have been able to um, keep their bloodline pure by um, incestuous relationships. So there's there's something there's some power incest gives a family, but we I'm not sure how that works. And I'm not really all that interested. I, I don't, that's witchcraft. That's wickedness. That's some kind of spiritual sorcery that, um, not part of my, not part of my understanding. I'm, I'm more likely to go with the women of the other nations. Um, I'm a, I'm a Benjamite. We, we don't have a family. We don't have wives. All our wives were slaughtered. So um, that's part of why I, I say I know that the Gentiles come in because that's where my heart lies. With Just like Paul was a Benjamite, um, he, and he was uh, the apostle unto the Gentiles. So when you think of Benjamin, I did the story, um, message a couple weeks, probably a few days ago. I talk about my tribe a lot, but... Um, during the Civil War, they, they were almost wiped out, and um, we had to take what was left. So we we've gone on to the Gentiles, we've gone on to the heathens, we've we've taken wives of many nations because um, the tribes agreed not to give Benjamin any of their wives. So anyhow, that's a sidebar. Let me continue. And Joab sent messengers to David and said. I have fought against Rabbah and have taken the city of waters. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it, lest I take the city and it be called after my name. So this royal city of Ammon, Joab went and subdued these people and David gathered the people together and they went onto this city and they took it. Um, and it was under the city of David. And this is how we know that David was the ultimate anointed conqueror of that um, royal city of Ammon. And David gathered all the people together and they went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. And he took their king's crown. <coughs> Salakia. He took their king's crown from off his head. The weight thereof was a talent of gold with precious stones and it was set on David's head. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. So what he did was he took these people of Ammon and they made him, he made them his people. He took it and brought it under the auspices of Israel. And he got the crown and he made those people subject unto him in the next verse. And he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws and under harrows of iron and under axes of iron and made them pass through the brickland. And thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. So David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. So he took control of these people. But um, they became subject unto him. That's... That's what we have to understand. The Gentiles have become subject under David. And I'll, I'll show you where, um, where that is uh, put into play. It's in Samuel. Um, let me see. Of course, someone calls right in the middle. I thought it was... I'm lost, I'm sorry. Um, geez, come on, Jeff. All right, it's right here. I found it. It's Samuel 8. 2 Samuel 8, David's conquests. 
Sorry for the phone call. I usually don't have anyone calling me. It's pretty cool. I don't have all these interruptions, but um, today I had a couple. So David's Conquest, and this is where it talks about <clears throat> Salakia. David putting the heathens under, under his rule, and I'll read through it. And after this, it came to pass that David, it's 2 Samuel 8, 1. He smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took <clears throat> Mephelamog out of the hand of the Philistines. And he came and smote Moab <clears throat> and measured them with a line, causing, casting them down to the ground. Even with two lines measured, he put them to death. And with one full line, kept them alive. And so the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. This is where we see David conquering the heathen nations, the, um, the enemies of Israel. So when it says he subdued them and brought them under his control and they brought gifts, that means that they were actually glad that they were under King David. They, they had the blessing of the King of Israel. They had the blessing of the Most High. And so after that, in verse 3, it says, And David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. So he went into this area, and he conquered this Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And David took from him a thousand chariots and 700 horsemen and 20,000 footmen. And David huffed all the chariot horses, but reserved of them, for a hundred chariots. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to succor Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David slew the Syrians two and twenty thousand. And David put garrisons in Syria in Damascus, and the Syrians became servants to David and brought him gifts. If you want to read this for yourself, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 8. And so when it says these things, this is when David is subduing the heathen nations. That's the Gentiles. That's the other nations that are not Israel. So when these idiots of GMS and um, these black Hebrew Israelites, um, Great Millstone and, and these other ones tell you, oh, the Gentiles are Israelites in a Hebrew, in a um, Gentile state of mind. That's nonsense. That's stupidity. That's that's lies, that's deception, that's demonic bullshit. Because right here it's telling you that David subdued these people and after he subdued them and kicked their ass and took everything from them, they were actually happy. And that's what these, these Edomites are trying to tell us right now. You will have nothing and be happy. That's, that's trying to be, um, that's trying to mimic the house of David. That's what David did to these heathens. He said, you will have nothing and be happy. I will. And they were. And they, they brought the last of what they had onto David. And, and here's some more proof of what went on here. Because we know in the end the Edomites get, they don't get blessed. And here's the reason why. And David took the shields of the gold that were with the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Barothel, Cities of the Hadadezer, King of King David took exceedingly much brass. Brass goes back to where these Hebrew Israelites talk about the the brass feet. Um, that means they're Negroes. No, the brass the brass is power. The brass is um, made into weapons. The brass is very hard. The brass cannot be subdued. The brass doesn't mean the color. Brass means the power. So when they try and tell you in, in <clears throat> Revelation, oh, and his feet were like burn, burnished brass or burnished whatever it is, it's not, it doesn't mean the color is like a Negro. It's the power of the brass. That's what it's talking about. And then Toy, king of Hamath, heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer. Then Toy sent Jeram, his son, and King David to salute him. And to bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and smitten him. For Hadadezer had wars with Toy, and Joram brought him with silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass. So this Toy guy 
he didn't even want to he didn't even want to argue he didn't want to fight he's like you know what i mean i'm giving up right now i'm giving him all my weapons i'm giving him everything i have and i'm going to be under king david and um, i don't need to fight anymore because under king david i'm safe and that's what these black hebrew israelites aren't telling you if you're not if you're not with the power of the gentiles if you're not knowing that you you already have all their goods you already have all their goods they're coming in under us they're not they're not going to fight against us they're they're our servants and that's why they brought gifts cuz they're they're happy to be under us they will have nothing and be happy because we'll give them exactly what they need and that's the correct mind the correct heart so then it says um Let's see. Um, which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and gold which he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued. So what kingdom did? He dedicated everything that he took from these heathen nations, these Gentiles, these people that needed to be subdued. He subdued them. They were under him. Um, they gave, they brought gifts and he dedicated it all unto the Lord of all the nations he subdued. He didn't subdue his own people. The kingdom was united under him. So who's he subduing? If he's, if he, who's, they, there's no, there's no Israelites with heathen mentality yet that the kingdom is still together. Solomon hadn't split the kingdom yet, Right. There was no northern and southern kingdom. It was all Jerusalem. It was all Bethlehem Ephrata. It was all the same people. So these Negroes, these dumb, idiotic, third grade mentality, bitch Hebrew Israelites are trying to tell you something that's not true. This is the proof right here that the Gentiles are under this house of David. The mercies of David are the mercies of that he shows onto these people. So let me go on of Syria and of, of Moab and of the children of Ammon and of the Philistines and of Amalek and of the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Reob, king of Zobah. These are all the heathen nations. David subdued people. Simple, simple. Don't let these third grade small bus black Hebrew Israelites tell you lies about our people our people are strong our people are powerful our people have the the he heavenly father and the only begotten son conquering anyone that comes against us okay all right okay <laughs> that's what these dummies always say okay all right they're trying to convince you of things that aren't true that's why they say okay all right you see no, we don't see. We see right through your bullshit is what we see. So then David's name is great. Next, next verse. And David got him a name. He got him a name. He got him a reputation. He got him a name among all people. Right? Okay. When he returned from smiting the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men, and he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons. All they of Edom became David's servants. All of Edom became David's servants. Some of these Edomites that are under our rule, that understand Israel, that understand the kingdom of our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Solomon, Jedediah, the first and the last, Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, that guy, through the Holy Spirit, these people, even of Edom, are going to be under us in the kingdom. They're our servants, not our slaves, GMS, not our slaves, Bishop Nathaniel, not our slaves, GOCC, 
or whoever else says, yeah, we're going to have them. They're going to be our slaves. Blah, blah, blah. No, they're going to be our servants. We're going to treat them with justice. And he put garrisons in Edom throughout all of Edom. He put garrisons. All they of Edom became David's servants and the Lord preserved David wheresoever he went. And so it says that a few times, wherever David went, he was preserved. No one could come against us. That's the, that's the point. And the other point about Edom is they didn't bring gifts. They were under subjection, but they were under subjection with wrath. They did not bring gifts. They didn't bow down. He had to put garrisons. He had to, he had to control them because they were unruly black Hebrew Edomites. That's what these Pharisees, these camps are. They're black Hebrew Edomites. That's why they have to be subdued. That's why you can't follow them. We're waiting for the Lord to come back and kick these guys' ass and put them under us so that we can put garrisons around them and they don't get to go out on the streets and yell at people anymore and act stupid and give Israel a bad name. We're Israel. We got the 100% truth. Bullshit. Liars. Liars. Like your father, the devil. And David reigned over all of Israel and David executed judgment and justice unto all, all his people. Justice and righteousness and judgment unto all his people. All the nations are under David. You get it? Don't let these devils tell you lies. And Joab, the son of Zeruel, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahudad, was the recorder. Everything's recorded. Everything's, the army is set. There's nothing going to change. It's, it's the same army. The army of David, the people of David, are going to rise up and put all these heathens under our power. They're going to be our servants. They're going to be our glory. They're going to bring us everything they have and worship us. And worship us under the reign of David because he had mercy on them and they're going to bring gifts to us continually continually and Zadok the son of Ahidab and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests and Sariah was the scribe it's all written down it's all recorded the army has it under control Everyone's under us, bringing gifts. They're, they're in their own place. The only ones that need to be subdued and, and watched over is these wicked black Hebrew Edomite pricks, these small bus Negroes that think that they have something, they have nothing. 100% truth. Hopefully, lack. Keep hoping. Keep hoping, dudes. Ain't gonna happen. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoadad, was over both... The Cherethites and the Pelethites and David's sons were the chief rulers. Who am I, people? I'm Adonijah. I'm one of David's sons. And I'm, that's, not, that's not saying much. Adonijah was a wicked son of David. I'm not saying I'm... I'm going to be... I'm going to be a ruler. But right now I'm just another servant telling you my my father is going to rule over all these people and I'm going to be under him making sure everything goes the way him and my Lord Jesus Christ have it planned and that's why it says at the end of these verses who these people who's the priest who's the recorder who's over the host of the armies who's over the, the scribe who's writing it down He's saying it, it, it is going to be what it says. This is your brother, J.D. Nijah, Word of Truth with J.D. Nijah, Jeff Deloach. All praise is honor and glory to the Most High, His only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit. I hope you enjoyed this message. Um, thanks for the new subscribers. Thanks for being here. This is a good place to be. This is, this is truth um, magnified. This is this is the no bullshit zone. I love you. Till tomorrow.
Peace and grace.